Hi, my name is Alex and I'm a music composer. Today I want to review a track that literally everybody and their moms have been asking me to talk about for these past few weeks. The battle theme for Scaramouche in Genshin Impact. The track has multiple phases. The first one that starts like this. This part feels already quite evocative to me. It makes me feel like I'm in the shoes of a weary wanderer, walking around the empty streets of a city at the midnight hour, lost in my thoughts, darkness all around me. The reason why I say that is that this specific melody sounds sort of like noir jazz music, like this. I can imagine Scaramouche in the 1950s in an empty New York street, smoking a cigarette. As in most of my videos, I'm gonna try to guess the story of the character by listening to his music alone. But I have to say, I have not played the Genshin Impact section where you meet Scaramouche as a boss, so I don't know anything about this guy. I just have suspects of what the music is telling me about him, but I wonder if they're correct or not. Anyway, the reason why I say this part feels like midnight hour is also given by the piano in the beginning. The piano is so insanely low, it feels like a bell tolling in the distance at midnight and it's tolling for your soul. That sound. It's quite hauntingly demonic. That haunted sound is given by the fact that this piano is playing at such a low octave, such a low timbre. And when you play an instrument in that super low range of notes, it's like having somebody speak with the deepest voice ever compared to the speaking with the highest voice ever, right? When you go super low, it creates this warmth that in a creepy context becomes darkness. That's what's happening in the theme right now. Now this next part I really appreciate. It sounds like this. So beautiful. Amazing melody. And then this bassoon. so low, like that's a super low woodwind instrument. I love the way Genshin Impact focuses on woodwind instruments, by the way, not a lot of soundtracks do that. And the reason why I love this passage are a few. One of them is I love the way the melody really feels like somebody taking tentative steps in the dark, feeling a bit lost. It sounds like this. Now, the second reason why I love this so much is that the strings playing underneath the melody, which are playing some tremolos, are so beautiful. They rise and then fall into silence and then rise again, feeling to me like waves of repressed emotions that Scaramouche is feeling as he's walking down this dark path that he finds himself in. That combination is so beautiful, also because it's played on such low timbre instruments, so that's why I feel the darkness. Every instrument that is playing right now is on very low octaves, and that creates an absence of light in the music. So to me, this section feels either like Scaramouche is lost in his sorrow, or Scaramouche has taken steps in a place or in a context that has the potential to change him forever. The darkness is tempting him to become something greater. This is what I feel in phase one. But let's see how this track continues. There's now phase two, sounds like this. It has still that dark vibe, but way more energetic, I would say. It's much faster. And it goes to this. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. Sounds like Star Wars in a way. And what I love is that apart from the drastic tempo change, there's this thin, small layer of percussion on top of the brass here, which 
to me is the biggest joke ever because like check this out To me, that sounds like flamenco dancers stomping on the ground rhythmically, like... Like, listen, this is literally the composers at Hoyo Mix referencing in a weird way Bohemian Rhapsody from Queen, I think. Because the Fandango is literally a type of flamenco dance. In fact, if we turn this section into flamenco, we get something like that. I mean, that's freaking amazing. That, that is literally the composers at Oyo Mix being like, yeah, well, let's Scaramouche do the Fandango. And then it goes to this. Damn, this is freaking amazing. Ah. Why do I love this so much? Well, on one thing, this is, again, the Oyo Mix composers giving a lot of character to Scaramouche because in this moment, what they're literally telling you is, you remember that theme that you heard before on like clarinet? That is actually the melody that belongs to Scaramouche. I mean this. This itself is Scaramouche's motif. Why? You may not recognize it right away, but this is literally the same melodic shape that the violins are playing in this moment. It's just harmonized and on a different sort of like key, but it's that. Sounds more dangerous now. You know? Now Scaramouche is really doing the Fandango and, and it sounds way more dangerous, evil, angry. And what I love so much is this This beautiful chromatic line definitely sounds like freaking flamenco, like Spanish. I love it. It's such a, such a cool vibe. But you know what's even cooler than that? The way this track is literally telling the story of what's happening in the bus itself. Like, here's a cool thing about this section. This, I believe, is a polyrhythm. Polyrhythm means when you have a piece of music with some parts that follow a certain type signature and other parts that follow a different type signature, but they play together. What I mean is this melody is following an 8 over 4 type signature that sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But underneath them, you have this sort of sound, this pulsating. Now, this sound is actually following a different time signature. It's following 3 over 4 time signature. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That's the time signature that it's following. So these two elements are based on two different time signatures, yet are, they're playing at the same time. So when you put them together, you get this trippy effect. That is very like amazing. Like we literally have a human melody playing slightly out of sync with a beating heart that is both organic and digital, sort of cybernetic. That to me feels like Scaramouche's soul is getting in sync with his mecha, because Scaramouche has a mecha, like a, a huge robot, right? Their heartbeats are slowly getting in sync, but they start a bit out of sync. That's why there's this polyrhythm. And then in the section after, we get this. Now this, every instrument here, is following the same time signature. And I love this shit because musically it sounds great, right? It sounds good. But it also makes sense in terms of the story of the game itself. And then the track progresses like this. Damn! So freaking cool, my god! 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 This is so freaking god! I love, I love this shit. Listen, when I first heard it, like the first time, I lost my mind. Can you hear? I was like, okay. I, I, this is a banger. This, God, ah! This tells Scaramouche's story to me so much. I haven't played the game, yet I feel this story. One thing you may notice is that feels like an evolution to the theme that we heard at the start, like this, na -da 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 -da, in the strings. If you go back to phase one, it's literally this. 
Remember the melody that felt lost? It's the same melody that the strings are playing here, although they're playing it in a different key. That melody right now feels way more epic, menacing. It signals the evolution that Scaramouche has gone through. The second thing I love so much is the harmony. If we remove the melodies, what you will notice is that like the first chord in the harmony, which sounds like this. To me, it makes me feel like we're literally ascending to the heavens and we're about to become an angel or a being of a higher existence, right? I expected, when I heard this track the first time, after this first chord, I expected to hear something grandiose. So I expected to go something like this. That's how I expected that chord progression to go because I feel like, whoa, we're ascending. And I really felt like this could be like that. But what ended up happening is the reverse of that. Instead of ascending to the skies with the angels, in that moment, the harmony went super dark and actually felt demonic. Listen to this. This sounds harmonically like the tale of a fallen angel who was destined to rise, but somehow something went wrong and it just fell down, banished to hell. That's what this section feels like. And it's so, I could feel, when I heard this track the first time, I was like, holy shit. Like I, I, I literally felt like, I, oh my God, the gates of heaven are opening up to me. And then, no, you go down to hell where you belong. That's, damn. And the woodwinds. Ah. And then. Again, the melody was Karamush. Ah. That is so freaking amazing. Ah. The first time I heard it, I was like, this can't be real. Like, the, I, I felt bamboozled. I felt like it defied my expectations. Although, although this chord progression that we're hearing now already kind of played at the start of the track. So it felt familiar, but I somehow still expected it to go a different way. I wonder if this also signifies Scaramouche's experience. I wonder if he actually feels like, I am worthy, I am destined to ascend. And then somehow he gets cast in the darkness, the depths of hell. And then there's this section. I've heard the singer in this track is actually Scaramouche's voice actor, like the Chinese voice actor. What I like so much is that there's two layers to this. There's one layer, which is like his normal voice, which I recreated badly here. But then there's like a demonic layer, which was made by processing his voice and making it like this. And when you put them together, that to me sounds like again this is literally Scaramouche's VA that's representing Scaramouche's humanity but underneath him now that he's embraced his obsession for power now that he's actually using that darkness that we felt at the start of the track there's now this huge shadow that is growing behind him. And that to me, that shadow is represented by the demonic vocal. That shadow could be the darkness itself, the power he's not harnessing, the power of the Fatui, or it could be his internal demons, which is, are now getting so big, but he doesn't care anymore. He decides to actually use those internal demons as a source of power rather than to keep them away, as he was trying to do in the beginning. I really love that. Because as a music producer, I know that works very well. Like when you write vocals, it, one great technique to do is to add many different layers. So it makes sense musically, but at the same time, it tells the story of the game. That is one thing that I really admire of Genshin Impact as composers. Anyway, let's move on. I forgot how the track goes now. Oh. Oh yeah, forgot. Ah! That is so cool. Ah! 
I love that bass. That is called a Reese bass. I talked about it in my Bury the Light video. You go from one note to another very slowly. So like, for example. It really gives this sense of like heavy machinery about to be engaged against you. Things are getting dire right here. Scaramouche is getting angry, AF, and then we get this. Damn. That is the coolest freaking ah, sound. I love that. Like this specific musical vibe. I wouldn't even call this moment electronic music, like this style. I would just call it cybernetic music. Because by the way, this reminds me of the soundtrack of one of my favorite mecha games called Zone of the Enders. In fact, if we were to, I don't know, crossfade this Genshin Impact theme into a Zone of the Enders theme, it may work perfectly. Let's give it a try. Same vibe. Barely feels like we even changed the song. That is literally, to me, as a Zone of the Anders fan, I'm like, holy shit. Hoyo Mix has freaking great tasty music to represent the moment where Skaramusha and his mecha merge finally. They literally, in a way, referenced the style of one of the best mecha games ever made. Let's see where it goes from here. Love these strings. Ooh, I love that organ. Yo! Oh my god! I, okay, where is it going? Damn! Ah, this will never get off me. I love this build up. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm trying to articulate my thoughts as, as, I, as I go through this video. The coolest thing to me in music is when the composers give you an element that steals your attention. And while that element has your attention, stuff happens in the background without you noticing, consciously. But subconsciously, you're like, holy shit, this is getting more and more epic. This passage is the epitome of that. We have this vocal that keeps repeating this ostinato. It's so obvious that literally that's what our brains pay attention to, because there's this, shit, this melodic ostinato that keeps repeating and it's very easy to remember, and we latch to that. While we latch onto that, what happens is that there's like this orchestration underneath that is evolving, like the organ reaching higher and higher notes, the, the orchestra getting bigger and bigger, the whole thing evolving while the singer gets more and more angry. That is amazing. Repetition legitimizes, as Adam Neely always says, but underneath the repetition, you need to have something that evolves. This concept is responsible for one of my favorite tracks in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. There is a boss theme where the choir keeps repeating a sentence or an ostinato and then it just, the rest evolves and it becomes super mega epic until the big chorus drop, whatever. It sounds like this. And also the question that it begs is like, holy shit, where is this epicness taking me? And the place where it takes you is... It's like, check this out. Damn. This feels like Japanese tribe or something. I love it. So amazing, so sexy. It's pretty freaking awesome. Scaramouche, as far as I understand, he's from Inazuma, right? The continent in the game, or, or the country, I don't know, that resembles Japan. We haven't heard that in the track, pretty much, until this very moment, where we have the sort of like Shakuhachi, that's playing that beautiful melody that is so sexy, by the way. I love that melody. It's, ah! But what I like is that in this moment, you could literally fit the Raiden Shogun theme, and you wouldn't even notice that it's an intrusion. It fits so well, and of course it does, because he is a child of Inazuma. And in this moment, I feel like the darkness has 
gone quite a bit. It feels like a section of the track which is more reflective of his past rather than his present. As if he actually misses the good old days in Inazuma. And you can feel that even in the way the track continues. Check out these vocals. Right now. Damn. Ah. So freaking warm, cozy, sweet, melancholic, beautiful. Those are all terms I would not use to describe the rest of the track because those emotions, those adjectives are not accurate to describe all the disgusting darkness of Scaramouche. But now that it feels more reflective of his past and way more human, we have those emotions in our core progression. We can hear them. In this chord progression, which is playing underneath the melody, you can clearly hear the tragedy of a man who, in his search for power, ambition, strove so far away from home in a way that is now bringing him a lot of pain. When he reflects about his past and how warm and beautiful it was, maybe he does feel a tinge of regret. And you can really feel it in the vocal there because suddenly it's like alone. There's no demonic voice in it. It's just him speaking his heart out. And this is the moment. Here. I love that. Like, it's so, like, that is a shift I did not expect to hear in this track. What happened is that in that precise moment, they added this. This F sharp note. Like, this. Uh, da, da, uh. That is very surprising and it's sort of like out of the colors we're using for this track. It's out of the key that has been used until the moment. So in this specific moment, they changed key. And that is like taking a painting and suddenly adding one color to your palette and removing another, changing the balance of the picture completely. That's why in this moment, it feels warm. A warmth that is alien to the rest of the song and only appears here. And then after that beautiful wave of warmth, you have this. This one. Like, it's like literally the choir and Scaramouche are having a dialogue. The choir says something, Scaramouche replies. They're having a conversation, opposed to the rest of the track, where the choir is always behind Scaramouche, bringing the darkness. Here, it's bringing the sadness. I freaking love that. I don't know what that means in terms of story, but in terms of music, it is so welcome. It's such an interesting change. I really like that. But before it gets too cozy and that melancholy, the track actually goes back in the darkness. And this section, it's pretty interesting. Check out what happens. Listen to it very carefully. We have this. This is, obviously, Scaramouche's motif from the start. With the creepy vocals on top. And then... Damn. Damn. Okay. Now this part is sort of like bamboozling. After that organ, da 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 da, you expect something huge to happen, but... It doesn't. Like the track cuts out and then we hear the Fatui theme. This is the Fatui theme. Okay. It's fine. And then this happens. And then it's like. This is not what you were expecting. This section feels a bit anticlimactic and it happens twice. There's this organ like, nah, nah, and you expect something epic to happen after that. In fact, if you're like most people, I would bet that what your ears expected to happen is this exact musical phrase. So 
something like that, which is Bach, Toccata and Fuga. One of the most famous classical pieces. Everybody knows this piece, like most people anyway, in the Western world, know this piece by heart. To me, Hoyo Mix playing that build up twice and then not leading to the epic is like them representing the Scaramouche has gotten this, this close to achieving the epic ambition of his dreams, of achieving ultimate power. He's getting this close to becoming like a divinity or something, but he never manages to. Like that buildup never actually leads to the resolution that we've heard so many times in the Bach piece. It doesn't come, it keeps happening, but it doesn't get there. What we get instead of the epic Bach finale is Japanese trap once again, but to be honest with you, I'm not complaining. By the way, many of you guys ask me all the time in my videos, holy shit, Alex, where did you get the single notes in the melody, the chords? How do you separate all the instruments? Where did you, how did you find the remixes and stuff? I make all those things myself because I am a music composer, a music producer. When I start my videos saying that, I really mean that. That's my job. And if you are interested in learning how to do this stuff, create your own music, you should know that I just published a course I made in collaboration with Art Master. It's my introductory course to orchestral music. It's easy to follow, explained by me as an attempt to give you the courage to go and embrace your musical self and write some amazing music. The course is three hours and 30 minutes long. You can watch it in one evening and then get started making music right away, have a lot of fun. And if you're interested, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description of this video where you can check it out. And feel free to use the coupon code ALEX20 to get a 20% discount on the price of the course. Once again, I have not played the game at this point. So all of these conjectures are based on me here in this track without context. That to me shows the extent of huge freaking big brain that Yu Peng Chen and the composers at Hoyo Mix have. For when it comes to representing the game, this is a freaking masterpiece. I thank everybody who requested me to analyze this track because it was a wild ride. I feel like I've learned a lot. So thank you for the people over at Patreon who requested this track, the people who requested it in the comments of every freaking video I made. And I'll see you guys next time with another music analysis. Bye.